Yo, what's up guys? Hope you're all doing well. Lately, I've been getting a lot of comments on my frame rates and a bunch of people have asked for an updated settings guide. It's been a long time since I did this last and finally a few things have actually changed in game. I'd say things have changed enough that I'll say this. If I can't get you guys at least 10 frames, go ahead and dislike the video and leave a terrible comment. Seriously, even I've gained some frames recently and I thought I had it all figured out. So in this video, we're going to go over all those settings that gave you the frames, but we're also going to go over everything that's going to give you a more competitive experience, make the game a bit easier for yourself, and just stuff that will help you play better in-game. Alright, so to start this video, I'm going to go over all the in-game settings. They've actually added a few in the last couple updates, so I've had to figure those out. I think I've found settings I like for pretty much everything, and definitely go ahead and try them out if you want to. I will say that copying anyone's settings for a lot of these preference-based ones isn't going to make you a better player, but there are some objectively better settings to run and i will point out all of those so starting in general um none of this is really objectively necessary i would just say turn on crossplay uh, turn off the hints if you don't need them uh, turn off share usage data and if you want to run portal servers then you can enable this now network settings none of this really matters here's what matters though i will start with the first objectively better setting run this on full screen you're going to get less input lag now, run your refresh rate at the highest refresh rate you can actually run on your monitor. And I would say run the highest res. This isn't exactly like an objectively best thing to do. But in almost every situation in this game, you want to run native res. Just because it's not really very clear unless you do that. This game forces anti-aliasing and things get really blurry really fast. So definitely for me, I'm always playing it native. Now, this is a preference-based setting FOV. But I will say that there are kind of objectively proven values. Anything from 74 to 95 is what I see a lot of good players using. It's a pretty wide range, but to narrow that down even further, somewhere in the 80s is where I see almost everyone playing at. Me, myself, I've played at 84 quite a lot, played at 89, and then 95 a bit. And out of all those, my favorite is somewhere in the middle at 89. Now, for vehicle third-person FOV, this is an objective setting. Like, this is 100% better to run maxed out. You're going to have a lot of threats coming at you, especially when flying, missiles, you know, helicopters, AA tanks. You can spot infantry. All this gets easier when you have more field of view. So definitely max this one out. Now, this setting is almost objectively better to run on, but some people do run it off. Honestly, here's the explanation. So running it off is going to give you a lot more zoom. But what this is going to do is it's going to make enemies appear to run faster across your screen. And it's going to make it seem like there's more recoil. In a game like 2042, where movement is pretty quick with soldiers, I would recommend running it on just so you get people moving slower across your screen and you can just track them a bit easier. I was actually watching a friend's stream today and we were giving him some tips and he was running this off. The second he flicked it on, he was visibly aiming a lot better. This is a huge setting. I'd recommend turning it on straight away. Now, brightness, this is map dependent, monitor dependent, you know, settings dependent on your monitor. I just run it on 60 for me, but I've played 50, 60, whatever doesn't really matter just get something that's comfortable for you don't wash out the image by going 100 actually find something that doesn't destroy the dark kind of element to the screen motion blur you want to turn it off chromatic aberration and vignette turn it off vignette vignette i don't know turn them both off and for graphics uh, actually an interesting thing with graphics i was watching shroud and he's been getting into the game and he tried out ultra and he said he couldn't tell the difference that's a new player you know an experienced fps player at that who cannot tell the difference between low and ultra, but he definitely could tell the difference between the frame rates he was getting, so he switched to low. And I agree, I think low settings look really good in this game, and unlike previous Battlefield games, you don't really gain anything by upping any of these. You used to like up mesh and up effects. In this game, you don't do any of that. Just run it all low. Now for the advanced ones, uh, just no dynamic resolution scale. I don't run DLSS. Uh, NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. I believe how this works is if you run it on Enable Plus Boost, it um, caps your GPU usage a little bit more. I want to have a bit more frames. My GPU is working very hard in this game, actually. So uh, I'll run it on Enabled. It will basically ensure that your GPU isn't running at 100% to reduce input lag. Something like that. Enabled or Enable Plus Boost depends on your frames. Just run what you want. Now, definitely turn off VSync. That's an objectively better thing to do. And future frame rendering, I see some people run it on and off. Sometimes I can't tell the difference. At least at release I couldn't, but I run it on myself. Now for the HUD general settings, uh, the only things I would say is definitely turn off HUD motion and turn off camera shake as much as you can. 
And now for more preference based settings, but a lot of people do ask me about this, the colorblind settings. Yes, I am colorblind, I'm red green colorblind. And I would recommend just doing a quick online test yourself. A lot of people are colorblind just a little bit without knowing. And sometimes changing settings like this can really help you. I know it did for me. So I run just the regular light blue friendlies, yellow enemies, because red enemies against the green background on the grass and stuff does not work for me at all. So I definitely just love yellow enemies. It makes it so much easier for me. And purple squad mates. The rest of this is all, these are new settings actually, but I haven't changed any of them. I just like how they look, how they are. Now for chat log, probably don't run it on all or show. Just run it on uh, when active or off. Honestly, chat doesn't really matter, but it is funny to see like complaints and all that stuff. Now this setting here, the, the kill log, uh, you definitely want to turn it on. I think it comes off by default. And I would recommend running it on all just because if you're playing a vehicle, for example, or even if you're playing infantry and you see like a player, let's say like if I see a really good player's infantry running the rail gun, I know to like cover the long sight lines. Or if I'm playing a helicopter and I see a really good player on the other team get a kill in a helicopter themselves, I know to prep for the 1v1. Uh, this is really free information that you can take. You can also run it on squad and nearby. If you're like an infantry player and you're running around and you see people in the kill feed, that means they're near you. But I don't know how this setting works, like how far the radius is. If I knew that, then it would be a bit more useful. But honestly, when I did used to run this, it was so niche and try hard and I never used it once. Just run it on all. It actually gives you way more of an advantage. Now for these settings, uh, I think just copy them if you want. I don't think they really matter too much. Here we go. Crosshair settings. I like the thick crosshair. Turn off projection so it just stays center screen. And I use a red crosshair. Now coming into hit indicators. I do change these here and there. But for now I'm running blue hits, purple headshots, and black kills. I turn off show damage type. Uh, more or less the reason why I do this is because if you have it on uh, the vehicle hit markers are like this weird box one which I really hate the look of so this gives you that classic cross hit marker on vehicles so I like running that off and armor broken is useful a lot of people do run armor in this game it's good information to have now for damage indicators I believe this came on red and yellow and I've just changed it to yellow and yellow because for me yellow is the enemy so I just always run my enemy colors on yellow that's how I'm running things at the moment. And I think indicators are a really, really useful piece of information. So I run them on thick as well. And now for minimap settings. Uh, some of this I believe is new. I don't actually recognize all of this. And I did play around with it and kind of tweak it to my liking. So rotate with view is nice. I prefer that myself. You, might, you don't have to run that, but that is what I like. Uh, on foot view distance, I find that 50 meters is about right for enemies that appear in my minimap that I can immediately act upon. And now for ground vehicles and air vehicles... I want to have this maxed out just so I can see, you know, jets, helis, all that in the distance, especially with 3D spotting coming back to this game. Now, minimap texture opacity. I didn't find this to really do much, but background opacity does. It just makes your minimap a bit more transparent. I actually run my HUD kind of center screen. I'll show you guys how to do that later. And uh, this helps a little bit with that. And then for big map, I have it 100%. If I have the big map up, I am not looking in the peripheral vision at all. So I'd rather just have it maxed out. Now, this stuff is all new as far as I know, and I have played around with it just a little bit. I'll just show on screen what my game looks like roughly, but more or less, uh, my objective is to kind of nullify and get rid of all the irrelevant information. So for me, I've played the game a bit. I know where all the objectives are. I don't need them to be really massive. Uh, I know what my friendlies are and what where they are, so I don't need them to be 100% opacity. And I do need my enemies though. Like my enemies are very, very important to be standing out as much as I can. So they're maxed out as you can see here, but you can copy these down if you want. Um, what I think I would suggest though, and I think it's a really useful tip is to turn off the objective icons when you're zoomed in. <laughs> There's also a bit of a dick move. I'm not going to lie here. I'm not going to lie here, but I did turn off my friendly revive icons because I don't really revive friendlies very often. I pretty much never play medic characters, so it doesn't really matter to me anyway. And if I'm reviving someone, it's going to be a squad mate. I just like knowing that I'm reviving someone that I can trust. So I have my squad revive my icons on, but I don't have my friendly ones. Now, coming into sound settings, I would recommend you running 3D headphones and you can change this if you want, the hit indicator uh, and all this stuff like in-world music, but... Just make your audio at a level where it doesn't 
ear rape you, but you don't want to have it so quiet that you can't hear anything. Voice chat, obviously, if you want it, you want it. If you don't, you don't. Uh, voice chat can be really annoying when you got someone just like <laughs> eating some chips on their mic or like you hear like, dinner's ready. Like that kind of shit, bro. Uh, the console players are really bad for that, aren't they? But uh, yeah, if you don't want voice, voice chat, that's fine. But I find it's useful to talk to teammates here and there and it can be funny sometimes as well. Stuff doesn't really matter here. I don't play on controller, so I won't bother showing you guys any of that. And the game is fixed now where there's no input lag by controller settings. Anyways, this is where it matters for me. So, um, raw input on. Uh, it says invert vertical flight and aircraft is on, but it's kind of confusing. So for me, I have uh, non-inverted in helicopters and inverted in jets. It doesn't mess with me at all. I'm just so used to that now. And the reason why is a control scheme called rifle aim, which I'll show you guys in just a second. So pretty much all of my uh, settings are kind of just default. I won't even show most of these because they really just don't matter. I haven't changed most of them. But I have changed the pilot settings quite a lot. So we'll show you guys those. So I'll start, I guess I'll start with the helicopter because it's the best one. Uh, these are just the general settings. I think they're all default. But now when we get to the movement ones, I change these a lot. So throttle up and down, that's default. Uh, your left and your right... I actually have this on my mouse, so my mouse left and my mouse right. I basically swapped around my roll and my yaw. Uh, this is called rifle aim. It's a control scheme that I think is a hugely advantageous thing in this game. And it basically allows you to aim using your mouse. And a mouse is just better at aiming than a keyboard. You can't really argue that. The other thing I also do is um, I used to run like pitch up and pitch down binds. I think I'm going to add these again. So I'll go... Um, uh, pitch up space, pitch down control. I would recommend having these. They're not super essential, but you might as well use them if you're going to use them in the jet as well. And as far as the rest of it goes, there really isn't much left. Uh, rear look is actually really useful when you're getting TV'd from behind. I really should do this more, but you can look back at the TV. Uh, helis and BF4 did not have rear cam, but those are basically my settings. So I use rifle aim, which is basically just swapping out in the roll and the yaw. I recommend trying it out. It is really annoying to get used to it first, but you'll get used to it. And I also remove spire, fire from spacebar, so whenever I pitch up, it doesn't fire the cannons. And other than that, I put my, uh, my flares on scroll down. That's about it, though. Now, for my jet settings, I honestly haven't checked uh, these out in a while because I haven't touched the jet in months, but you can copy them if you want. Jets in this game are just so underwhelming. This is coming from like a diehard jet player in BF4. I just can't stand them in this game. But those are my jet pines. They did used to work pretty well when I did it. And other than that, there's um, there's not really a whole lot left. Uh, when we go into the sensitivity tabs, you guys can copy these if you want. I'll point out the important stuff. This is a 34cm uh, 360i run at 1600dpi. Copy that sense if you want. Doesn't really make a difference. And... Soldier weapon zoom, I run it on hold. Uh, I like running my aim sense at 100. And what actually matters is getting down to uniform soldier aiming. I run it on at 0%. This is kind of like a... It's mathematically correct. It does feel a bit weird at first, but... After playing a lot of Apex Legends, which has this as default, I got so used to it and I really loved how it felt with scopes. I could pick up the Kraber when I used to play and just aim it straight away despite never using it. And I had to look at the, the kind of math behind it and copy it to all the other games I play. And I recommend trying this on 0%. Give it a go. I really rate that. As for vehicles, though, I run 8%. Same TPI, 1600. And one thing I would recommend for vehicles, actually, run toggle weapon zoom for the helicopters. You often just zoom in and then just start farming up for like 5, 10 seconds. So this just helps take some pressure off the mouse. It just feels really, really good and natural. I love this setting. Definitely try it out. Almost everyone I've told about this setting has just raved about how good it feels. It's just this weird thing, which even if you run hold all time in every other game, in the helicopter, running it on toggle is just a, it's a nice experience. As for the pilot settings though, 170. Copy this stuff if you want. Uh, I do like third person aircraft camera roll off. I'm not sure if this does anything yet, but this is the BF4 setting, which I used to love. So hopefully that actually works. And I also do use uniform vehicle aiming also at 0%. But 
Not sure if this really does anything, because it's not really the same kind of mouse input as a infantry soldier, but it feels good for me. My aim feels good in the heli. The rest of this is pretty much irrelevant. There's not really anything left, but that is not it, guys. So if you're still on PC, um, there are some FPS commands, which I would recommend. There's not many, and there's no user config, so you have to type these in every time you launch the game. But the first one you get by just typing in CS, and then uh, come down to this one here. Uh, what this does is it just like kills a bunch of the shadows and stuff. As you can see, as soon as I put it on, the game looks very different, but you gain like 10 frames from doing this. The next one is uh, transparency shadow map enable. Not sure what this does, but it gets you frames, so I run it. And also a player that I uh, like know and respect is ShadyNZ. He reckons that this reduces motion blur a little bit more, so... I'll take his word on it. You know, I, I'd like to get rid of as much motion blur as possible. So those are the three commands I do. Light tile, CS path enable, trans transparency shadow maps enable, and motion blur enable. Turn them all off. There you go. That, that's going to get you probably 10, 15 frames alone. All right, now for the Windows settings. There's not really much to do here, but I'll just start by going into the mouse settings. Always do this on every like, new PC you build or whatever. Additional mouse options, pointers. So pointer options and then disable this. Make sure you do not have enhanced pointer precision. Once you've done that, you can hit apply and then go on. After that, NVIDIA control panel. I think AMD has an equivalent thing, but I'll just show you guys NVIDIA settings. I won't go through everything, but some of this does matter. So go ahead into uh, manage 3D settings and basically just copy these down. I'll just scroll slowly so you guys can get through it all. I have explained all these before in previous settings videos, but honestly, do you guys really care or do you just want to get frames? These are the best settings for NVIDIA uh, as far as I've checked recently, and they will get you a decent amount of frames in pretty much any game. I have them on global settings as well because I like applying these to every single game I play. If you guys don't want that and you just want it on 2042, you can go find it in the list here. And if it's not in the list, then you can go add it and then go find it. It'll usually be here. And if it's not there, then you can hit browse and actually just go locate it. Anyways, that should be it. That's all the desktop settings you need. So if you've done all of this and you still want more, there are a few extra steps. 2042 is a really CPU and RAM intensive game. So therefore, you'll benefit from a CPU and RAM overclock. For CPU overclocking, just Google guides relating to whatever you have. As long as your cooling solution permits it, Make sure you're not overclocking on a stock fan, that's just not worth it. Now RAM is a bit trickier. I've linked a guide in the description which is pretty bulletproof. It does take time but the results are definitely worth it. Now if you're still after more, it might be time for an upgrade. For a top value kind of build, consider the AMD 5800X3D paired with dual rank memory and the best GPU you can afford. If you want the very best of the best, then by all means just go all out. I think the new Intel is really good right now. Just remember that RAM and CPU are the priority for this game. Now anyways, I hope this video helped you guys. If you want to discuss anything further, pull up to one of my many streams. Other than that, take it easy guys and have a nice day.